Well, Chelsea have also had their fair few problems um, in the last couple of years as they search as well for their perfect manager. They do have Mauricio Pochettino right now, and he's getting ready to face the ex, not just an ex, the ex. We know how much he's loved at Tottenham and it's Chelsea Spurs this coming uh, weekend. And he's had some very complimentary things to say about his former club. Yes, I think so. And I think they are doing a fantastic job. I think Ange and, and, and the, all the coaches and staff that I know very well, they are doing a fast, fantastic job. And then, of course, uh, very good players, very good team. And of course, you can, you can feel uh, they, can, they can be a, a, a contender for the... It's, of course, it's early on the, on the season. But of course, they are showing the quality to be a contender. Is this a little bit like going back to see an ex-girlfriend? Going back to Spurs. To go to see an ex-girlfriend. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> it's difficult because I, I think with 30, nearly 32 years with my wife. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know if I I remember I don't know if, even if I, I I had, you know, girlfriend before my wife. <laughs> that is that is why it's difficult. To answer that question, <laughs> because I don't know how you can feel. <laughs> Uh, must be nice, Mauricio, must be nice, but we'll talk about that another time for those who have found their one. James, let's go to you. So, Pudge can't remember what it's like going back to, to visit an ex-girlfriend, but you ri you've written a piece um, on this, and the truth is we've all fallen in love with Ange Postacoglu and the Aussies' way of, of how he's, you know, leading his troops at Spurs right now, and you actually think that this um, matchup for Chelsea has come at the wrong time for Pudge and Co., yeah, I, I've not written a piece about going back to visit your ex-girlfriend, just to make that clear. That's a very, that's a very, <laughs> very different, <laughs> very, very different to what I've actually done. Um, no, I, look, I mean, it has come at a bad time for him because, you know, Spurs are flying the top of the league. They're one out of their, eight out of their ten games. They look really, really good. And and Chelsea are a long way, you know, from looking like a cogent, um, consistent team at the moment. And, you know, when you think about, um, the fact that they both started work on the same day, they were both appointed on July the 1st, officially started work on July the 1st. It, it very much looks as though one manager has had much more of an impact than the other. Now, that is quite harsh on Pochettino because, of course, we all know that the sheer scale of the turnover at Chelsea in the last 18 months since the Bowley Clear Lake takeover. They've spent a billion pounds on players, huge amount of money, sort of unprecedented, really, to, to transform a squad to the extent that they have in this time frame. And of course, he's had a lot of injuries to contend with as well. You know, the, the, the list of absentees has been um, particularly long all season long. Key injuries too. You know, I think losing Wesley Fofana in, uh, in pre-season was a big blow to them. Christopher and Kunku, of course, their new signing uh, to, to, to solve this goal scoring issue that they have has not been able to play since pre-season. And, and they've had niggling problems to Ben Chilwell. Rhys James has only started one league game this season. Woodrick, Enzo Fernandez missed the, uh, the, the, the the defeat to Brentford last weekend. So they've had problems all the way through. And and, and you'd have to say that Postacoglu has not really had to deal with that. He's been able to pick pretty much his first choice team uh, every week. But Pochettino has yet to really implement a style of play on this Chelsea squad. And, and, and actually, it's quite cyclical, the nature of their, their shortcomings. You know, they're starting well in games. They're creating chances, they're not taking them, then they're conceding soft goals and they're not finding um, to, to, uh, you know, a way to respond to that. And that was really the pattern that did for Thomas Tuchel near the end. It was certainly the pattern that did for Graham Potter. And it was a pattern that Frank Lampard in his interim role was unable to break. And the fact that Pochettino has not really been able to change change the record there compared to what Postacoglu has done, despite losing Harry Kane, of course, as we all know, talismanic centre-forward, club's all-time top goal scorer, second all-time top goal scorer in the Premier League. And yet, he's got them playing in this new, expansive style that is absolutely light years from what Antonio Conte was doing, you know, not six months earlier. So that's why it looks a bit awkward for Pochettino, because, of course, there needs to be patience. Of course, he needs to be given time. But the further and further they fall away from the top four, while across town, someone with much more modest resources is exceeding all expectations. That juxtaposition starts to get quite awkward for Pochettino quite quickly, I think. 
Shaka, how much are you buying into what Angie's doing um, at Spurs? How long can they keep this run going? Or do you see Chelsea probably being a potential uh, banana peel for them? Uh, let me tell you something. If Ange is selling whatever he's doing <laughs> in North London right now, I'm buying, I'm borrowing money from family and friends and buying a little bit more if, if I possibly can. Spurs have been simply, I, I don't think you can sing, you, you can sing Ange Postacoglu's praises uh, highly enough. Uh, to, yeah. to, to James's point, you lose you lose uh, Harry Kane. What do you do from there? He sticks Son through the middle. In Son's first game through through the middle against Burnley, I think it was, he scores a hat trick, and all of a sudden Richarlison becomes uh, a little bit of an issue because Richarlison is not the best finisher. He was having a tough time and and expressed as, as much when we on international duty. So what does he what does he do with Richarlison as opposed to just kind of leave him out on the scrap heap? He sticks him out on the left hand side and, and at least uses his pace, his aggression um, in, in, in servicing Sean through the middle. He has is, is adjusted this, and I'll, I'll use James's term again, the modest resources that he has um, to, to craft a team that are playing arguably the best football in, in the Premier League. Certainly, yeah. I, I think as a story, there, there isn't a better story in, 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 in the Premier League right now. And while I, I don't see this continuing until May, I still think that... that uh, City, Arsenal, and Liverpool are better squads in, in entirety, and over the long, over a long season, will probably get the better of Spurs. You have to love everything that that uh, uh, Spurs are, are are showing uh, right now. Contrast that with, with with Chelsea, who we've seen we've seen this this issue and or, or or this version of Chelsea for over a year now, and you 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 continue to scratch your head. Different managers, more accomplished managers, wondering where, where it all comes right. I I, I think, and, and to James's point, I, I think this is as good as we've seen Chelsea for that 12 or 15 months. And I, I watched Chelsea against Brentford, and, and, and bear with me here. I, I felt that the difference between Chelsea now and the Chelsea they saw at the start of, of the season, I, I thought Chelsea at the start of the season had no idea what they were doing or had no idea what um, Pochettino was asking for. Now I feel you can see better patterns of play, them trying to get the ball wide. I think it all comes crashing down because they don't have that, that finisher. Because Jackson just isn't the player that I thought I thought he would be. Well, he, he was always raw in, in Spain. But I thought I, I thought somebody like Christopher Nkunku would get the best out of him. But then Nkunku goes down injured. And I, so I'm, I, I say that I'm, I'm watching Chelsea against Brentford. And I'm thinking, this is, Chelsea are playing some good football here. But as the game goes on, I'm realizing Brentford's keeper has not a save to make. So for all their possession, all the football, all the improvement that we've seen over the last four or six weeks, I could have played in goal for Brentford and, and, and not be bothered. And we know how good Brentford are on the counter-attack. And that's what called Chelsea, called Chelsea out in the end. Listen, uh, Chelsea, in, in fairness, should have had a penalty and maybe that changes the discussion. But it shows the need for that finisher that Chelsea continue to lack that they simply do not have. They have a lot of midfielders, but they do not have a finisher. And while while po Pochettino will continue to improve the team without that finisher, I, I'm not sure that the results will improve. 